Is fluoride safe for everyone? All kids' toothpaste are the same and effective. No. I see a lot of people breathing through their mouth, so it must be normal. No, this is not right. Once I floss and brush my teeth, I'm all good to go. I do not need to do anything else. That is not right. Myth number three. I'm Dr. Maria Floro, and this is Mind Your Mouth. I'll be sharing with you the truth about oral health that most people completely overlook. If you're ready to go beyond the basics, challenge the myths, and truly transform your well-being, let's get started. You have asked and we are here for you. So we're answering your questions once again. We're here debunking some of the most common myths for you. So myth number one that I want to talk to you about today is fluoride. Is fluoride safe for everyone? So I hear a big talk about fluoride. There are even campaigns to ban fluoride on certain areas, especially here in Australia. We see that happening a lot. But fluoride, is it a toxic element? Why do we want to stop the use of fluoride or why should we continue the use of fluoride? Yes, fluoride is considered a toxic element, especially depending on the quantity that's been used. And that's why having a controlled use of fluoride is very important. And that's why we see in our water supply and our toothpaste, we have a very controlled amount of fluoride. If you're going to ask me, should I use fluoride? Should I avoid fluoride? Personally, if you follow what we discussed on one of our previous episodes and you address all the other factors that contribute to oral disease, you do not need to use fluoride. There are a lot of things that you can do apart from fluoride to keep your oral health at good standards. So make sure you watch that episode and you inform yourself how to get better and how you can avoid fluoride altogether. There are good things like hydroxyapatite, especially the nano form of hydroxyapatite. And I know it's a big word, read here on our description. You are going to be able to find several toothpastes nowadays with hydroxyapatite. And it is a better alternative. Yes, hydroxyapatite mimics natural enamel, making it safer for teeth. So it just mimics your natural structure there. It also helps to repair your enamel, repair your dentine, which is the soft part of your teeth just below the enamel there and it reduces tooth sensitivity naturally. So make sure you look for something with hydroxyapatite and xylitol. There are lots of other ingredients that you could have on your healthcare repertoire and make sure that you use them instead of fluoride. Yes, fluoride has a place in dentistry. It's proven to work when it comes to teeth, but again, depending on quantity, if you're giving fluoride to a very young child that cannot spit out, there is a risk of intoxication. So I'll leave that with you. Again, make sure you make an informed decision. The other myth that I really want to bust here, and look, I'm sure you know the answer for this one by now, just listening to me with the first myth, are all toothpaste and, to and mouthwashes the same? So it's everything that we see the same. No, they are not the same. Make sure that you steer away from alcohol-based mouthwashes. We've seen very detrimental effects in the body coming from certain types of mouthwashes. We've seen even more cancers forming with the use of certain mouthwashes. So no, not all mouthwashes and toothpaste are the same. Avoid also things we hear, oh, this is natural, I'm going to use that, that's natural. Natural is a word that's being used a lot because it's very persuasive. However, do you know what's natural that's there? We know that cocaine is natural. Should we all be using cocaine? I'll leave that answer with you, but listen to me, not everything that's natural is good for you. So essential oils like eucalyptus and peppermints have high toxicity. Look for spearmint instead. Uh, make your research real quick. Your mouth is the gateway to your overall health. And at Casarina Dental, our focus is on you. If you're ready for a holistic approach to dental care, book your appointment now via the link in the show notes. Now back to the episode. Also what happens with a lot of the mouthwashes and toothpaste that we see, we see things like 
triclosan, alcohol being used. And uh, we know that these things have a detrimental effect. Look for something with xylitol or inulin to feed the good bacteria. We want more good bacteria in our body. Avoid toxic sweeteners like aspartame, sorbitol, saccharin. Use xylitol instead. Sorbitol comes from the same family as xylitol, but we don't want sorbitol. We really want xylitol there. Foaming agents. A lot of my patients come and say to me, Maria, look, this has SLS, which is the sodium lauryl sulfate. We don't want that. There are natural agents that create foaming, but we want to stay away from anything that comes from petroleum. And the same thing is with floss. Now, this one I'm going to share with you because my heart sank when I read the research of what we're putting in our body. And please, please pay attention to this one. Send this information to the people that you love because this one, it's really mind-blowing in a not very good way. A lot of the flosses that we see in the market nowadays have PTFE. What is PTFE? It's Teflon. So when we look at the research about Teflon, we see that Teflon has been linked to several types of cancers. And when we're rubbing Teflon in between our gums and our teeth, what do you think is happening there? There is a contact that our body is getting with Teflon. We do not want that. So please avoid PTFE at all costs. Look for the alternatives. Safe floss alternatives would be things with silk. B wax is a very good one. Even nylon and polyester are not my favorite ones but they're still safer than using something with Teflon. Myth number three, I don't need to floss, do I? I don't get any food trapped in my teeth. No, you do need to floss. You do need to floss. Not flossing leads to a 30% increase in mortality. Yes, you heard me correctly. 30%. Do I need to say anything else to persuade you to floss? Myth number four, all kids' toothpaste are the same and effective. No, that is not true. Not all toothpaste for children are safe and not all of them are effective. Otherwise, if they were, we wouldn't see any child with decay. So they're not the same. Make sure you follow us, that you educate yourself on what you're buying for your child, what you're buying for your kids and what you're using in your mouth. Myth number five, no need to clean your tongue if you brush your teeth. Once I flossed and brushed my teeth, I'm all good to go. I do not need to do anything else. That is not right. You need to clean your tongue. The tongue has a very, very interesting structure. It's very, the texture is very different than the texture that we see on gums, cheek, teeth, uh, and it's very velvety. So make sure that you clean your tongue. Use a good tongue scraper. When to do it? Twice a day. Every time you're going to brush your teeth, floss, make sure that you clean your tongue. We don't want bad bacteria harvesting your tongue. So make sure we clean that. This one, I'm going to end up with this. This is a very important myth that I want to, to break. So mouth breathing is normal. I see a lot of people breathing through the mouth, so it must be normal. No, this is not right. Mouth breathing increase chances of gum inflammation and higher chances of cavities. When we breathe through the mouth, we're not filtering the air. We inhale all the dust, all the bacteria, everything that's in the air. And we see more allergies happening with people that mouth breathe versus people who breathe through their nose. We, are, we also see a lot of people with sleep problems and other things happening because of mouth breathing. The jaws don't form the right way. We really need to be breathing through your nose. And if you have any trouble with that, make sure you look for a health professional that can help you. That's someone that has the focus on nasal breathing so we can overcome that myth. Thank you for staying to the end with us. Thank you for watching this episode. I hope this could bring value to you. If you did, make sure you watch it, you take your notes, you do your research, but also share this episode with the people that you care and love. Together, we can get to a healthier community. Thank you for tuning into Mind Your Mouth. These episodes have been created for you. If you found this conversation helpful, the best way to support the show is by leaving a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And don't forget to subscribe on YouTube so you never miss an episode. For more tips on holistic dental health, follow me on social media at Casarina Dental. In the meantime, 
Take care of your smile. Take care of your health. And I'll see you in the next episode.